The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. All right, welcome everybody to How to Be Compliant and Competitive Online. Humanize your financial institution with social media, seven key steps. Uh, and we should actually call this uh, Humanize your financial institution with social media and your people, but we'll get into that. So we just delivered this at a couple of different conferences, uh, banking and financial uh, services related, and wanted to make sure that we uh, got this on a webcast recording so that you could take advantage. A lot of people requested a copy of it. So rather than just give you slides, let's, let's give a little context uh, behind here. So um, uh, my background is uh, I am founder and CEO of Forward Progress. Uh, we're a 15-year-old digital marketing company that helps compliant-based organizations um, really understand and implement social media best practices and digital media best practices. Also the creator of Social Jack, if you go to socialjack.com, it's a influencer development platform for professionals and uh, we've uh, trained and coached over 120,000 uh, people on that platform and uh, 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 mostly in compliant or regulated industries. So that includes insurance, banking, financial services, uh, credit unions, you name it. Um, my background, I started at Merrill Lynch on the data side, the technology side, uh, then went into technology for a CPA firm on the bank auditing side, did that for five years. Uh, then uh, went to the front office as it relates to systems implementation, CRM, digital marketing, and uh, most recently uh, employee advocacy and influencer development. So as social media came along, our world changed and everything changed in how we look at digital media, social media, and especially when we gave power and control to our employees in some capacity, uh, we had a couple of choices. So we're gonna take you through the journey on that and uh, some implementations, and we have a case study at the end uh, to cover with you. Um, so with that being said, we do have a webcast a podcast that you can tune into or subscribe to called the Influence Factory, where we take a lot of business professionals, uh, we highlight their story, and then also they share with us their expertise on how they have built their digital influence. Um, and then uh, those of you who are interested, um, I just published a book uh, mostly uh, for the users or executives within your organization. It's called The Street Guide to Digital Business Influence. And it's for those who want to be known or get found. Easiest way to get the book is just to type my name, Dean Delisle into Amazon, and it's the only one I have out there. So it's the first book called First. Um, so there you have it. All right. So as we look at social media within the organization, um, it's a lot of times we go in phases, and I'm going to talk about the different phases of implementation and the different practices um, of uh, really implementing a good solid social media strategy, and then how do we uh, safely activate the humans in our organization. Now, real quick, before we get started, I'm just going to do a quick polling um, uh, question here uh, that just asks, um, does your uh, institution uh, have a social media policy, uh, employee uh, social media training policy uh, or program, employee advocacy program or content management system? And I'll explain and wrap back to this um, shortly, but just go ahead and click on the one. And I know we have some financial institutions in here, so it's not necessarily just a bank. Um, but uh, uh, many of us start with a social media policy and then um, we migrate into some of these other areas. So I appreciate everybody that jumped in and, uh, and uh, I'll be able to set some context back to you based on uh, the, the, what we just pulled on. Um, so with that being said, let's just go through some quick stats and we have lots of stats. So those of you that love reports or you need stats or case studies, um, you can uh, uh, contact me directly. We'll give you some information at the end. But um, really what we look at is um, how do we build trust? And with uh, banks and banking technologies and financial technologies and financial systems, uh, if you just look at the 
the mortgage industry, which is probably one of the most aggressive besides the credit industry, um, you know, technology has really just zoomed way ahead. And so what makes us different? In fact, we were on with a mortgage company this morning and they said, well, really, we're all the same. The only thing that makes us different are our people. So, you know, we're talking to them about doing some of the things that we're going to take you through today, but it's really about how do we safely activate those humans to build trust um, and also build a network and actually a good culture in the mix. And sometimes people don't think of that charge or that dynamic as they're given the mandate of, hey, we have to get up on social media and uh, what do we do next? You know, so that's usually the conversation of how it gets started. And then we have corporate accounts and um, it usually stops right about there and then people aren't sure where to go. So we'll take you through that journey here. But uh, some of the good uh, stats that I like are how do people make decisions, buying decisions. And those of you that do follow marketing or uh, understanding the buyers out there, if we look at uh, Mark Schaefer's new book, uh, Marketing Rebellion by Mark Schaefer, um, he talks about how the buyers and the purchasers in today's world have really dictated the game on how we do business. So, you know, uh, you know, a lot of people go for the rate game where they're uh, playing the rates and publishing the rates and really just trying to outrate the other <laughs> bank or whatever, the institution. Uh, if it's in the borrowing uh, sector, it's obviously for the lowest rates, lowest payments, things like that. But at the end of the day, it's based on relationships. That's the, the long, true uh, sort of fact of it all. And so when we look at, you know, sales reps, business development that use social media, we uh, have them outselling at about almost 80% of their peers uh, as reported by Forbes. So again, we have, you know, hundreds of stats, um, but if you need more stats for your initiative, just please let us know. Let's go through a couple um, definitions. Community marketing, which has probably been around the most, uh, I started out with community marketing, and that means you're in your community. doesn't mean it's always digital. It could be any type of promotions, press releases, um, advertising, billboards. I don't know how many of you still do outdoor or print, but that's another uh, whole world that is still activated out there. And, uh, you know, we call that integrated marketing, you know, making sure your marketing works together, but you can still separate the messages. So community marketing is probably the one we're most all familiar with. Um, then we have, um, we w when we get into the humans and we cross over community marketing, and community marketing, I'm going to bucket uh, digital marketing in there. I don't want to uh, get crazy on terms, but as we relate to what we're talking about today, I want to just give you the terms that apply. So business influencer are where people are known, uh, seen as advisors, okay? So that means that you are giving advice, and if you think about in your email, we always tell people, you know, first place to look is in your outbox. How many messages do you send a day and how much advice do you give? And if you look at the definition here, it's like you're influencing others, um, you know, to actually make decisions or change decisions and ideas. And that could be buying decisions, that could be staying decisions. Do they want to stay with your institution? So this works in many different ways. So just think about how that applies to you. Is your bank seen in, or is your institution seen in a thought leadership capacity? You know, are you seen with, throughout the community, right, as we go from community to influence? And then there's employee advocacy. How do people think or believe in the brand? So there's all kinds of platforms and things like that. And I'm, eh, you know, sort of pro and con, you know, as you looked at, um, uh, employee advocacy programs and platforms, and I love you guys out there, you're my partners, um, but, but the challenge is we gamify it, we game the system, so we set it up so that if people are going to share content, we turned it into a little bit of a game or contest, and I'm guilty of that too. I mean, growing up in, uh, there's a segment of my career where it was call center driven. I was in the, the you know, sort of uh, credit card activation and that industry, and, and you start working with insurance around there. It's really almost boiler room mentality, and then everybody is, is just working 
to get some sort of a goal uh, in mind, but then there's these rewards and it creates a false sense of transparency or authenticity. And what we find is we really want that real sense of who the people are in the bank, um, and and you know stay within the compliant realm and then also make sure that people build that trust with the brand. So now when we look at some of the real challenges. So first, um, the changing landscape, right? Culture, right? We can't always dictate or change or shift the culture in any short capacity, no matter the size. And there's a lot of acquisitions, there's a lot of merges going on, you know, mergers going on out there. And so as we put people together in different types of people and we blend cultures, we can't always control that, but we can be an agent of change and, and, and really, help make that better or a better transition. We we can hardly ever control the market. In fact, we most uh, certainly react to the market. So that's one position that we're in. Um, information constantly changes. So I just gave you some data and that's probably gonna change in a few months. Um, employees change and we can and cannot control some of that and then clients and customers. Now. One thing that we see that is a common element in all institutions that we walk into is really the mindset, right? So the mindset of the organization. And a lot of times that's from a top-down initiative. Now, some of you on the call or listening into the recording might say, I am you know, at the senior executive management level. So I address a lot of senior executives and we have some people that were what we call old school and some that were uh, opened, uh, you know, a growth mindset. They were willing to listen because they know it is a new digital age. Now, when we go through the conversation, we have the conversations, we have it at an organizational level, and then we go in and we talk to the people. So what do we find out? Well, first and foremost, what gets in the way is fear. So at the organization level, we'll have people that go, what about productivity? We can't have people on social media. You know, what's that gonna do to their productivity? We're not gonna be able to process enough, uh, you know, loans. We're not gonna be able to do this. We're not gonna be able to do that. And so all of a sudden that pops up to the surface. How can we control this? Well, many of you, I think uh, over half of you said you have a social media policy. You're on the right track. That's the first step. Just make sure you keep it up to date. Can this really help us? Well, the stats and the evidence show, but it depends where you're at in your cycle of growth or stability to dictate if you know how important you really need new business and how important it is for your competitor who might be going digital to not take that business away from you. So the help is really depending on the mindset of that organization. Now, uh, does the risk outweigh the benefits? There's always risk, but of course there's cyber scenarios. You know, I don't even have to tell you about this, but there's cyber scenarios where you have like, oh my gosh, I was on a bank call early this morning uh, with uh, some senior officers at a bank and they are uh, dealing with their uh, provider on the back end and they had some security hacks and so they had to deal with that. So that's a, a very high risk. But what we're talking about is making sure that people are safe and, and the institution is safe and everybody can understand the benefits. And we're not talking about going way out there. We're talking about you know, the law of little movements or things to make these things great and to make them happen. And then a lot of times I get, why is this in my department? So I'll get, you know, different departments that want to get activated and they say, we're going to pilot with this department. And then all of a sudden somebody's got, why did they pick me? And so, you know, this is some of the fear that we get or the questions, you know, the responses that we get. Now, on the employee side, they're like, I don't have enough time to do this. So, you know, there's right and wrong people that we select. And we'll talk about that for a minute. I don't know what my voice should be. They don't know how to be online. And we wanna tell people to be authentic and genuine, but also also not like um, really worry about um, coming up with a voice. Just be natural, but also uh, be uh, right on the mark, right? And so, you know, don't worry about negative comments and then don't, know, don't worry about what to post. So, you know, there's a lot of things that come up in the fear-based conversation. And so we help people think through that when we're doing the training. 
Now, let's talk about humanizing your bank online, seven key areas. So now we have seven key areas. And again, doesn't have to be a bank, could be any financial institution. So we just took this from a banking conference. So you'll see the term bank in here. Now, as we structure, you know, the online, uh, you know, sort of structure of this, we always start at the top with policy. We then go to management team, right? So we're going to talk about each one of these. Then we get into training. We get into what we call the influencer team, the employee team, then marketing, distribution, and then measurement. So these are the cycles, the seven pieces we're going to talk about today. So now if we think about this, let's start with policy. So what should be in a policy? Well, we should have employee access. You know, your uh, uh, corporate policy sh should specify, you know, what sites people are allowed to use and, and the use of those official sites. Now, it may cross over and we have some people that have cell phone policies and other types of policies and really taking things at that level. Then we have uh, uh, sort of like as, as we look at, there's conduct and oversight. And what's funny is a lot of the times when we pull the code of conduct that's in the employee agreement, uh, many times that is absolutely uh, the basis for a good social media policy. So most of you that don't have one or didn't click on that are pretty much almost there. If we look at the security guidelines, uh, there's always guidelines, right? But you don't have to box people into where they're handcuffed. You can really create it to where um, it's it's in a good place based on the you know the type of institution that you are, the type of customers that you're dealing with, etc. And then there's always disclaimers and then what we call rules of engagement. So how do people conduct themselves? And again, code of conduct typically handles face-to-face, off-premise and things like that. And then we wanna move into um, rules of engagement online. So we always wanna keep that in there. Um, we then talk about who do we get on board from the management team. So we like to make sure we get a little bit of everybody in there, but this is just to give you some ideas. And you might say that person will never be in there. But why would we have people involved? Well, we have the executives who uh, know the business mission typically um, and the culture sometimes, uh, depending on the institution. Finance, they know the money. We had a CFO on with us this morning and you know, they're a little more reserved and they're not on social media, but they have bought in and they understand the program. Marketing, they're the champions of the brand. Sales know the objectives for new business. The account execs know the current customers or the ones that, you know, are freshly in the door and what they're saying and thinking. Customer service knows what needs fixing. And then operations knows what makes the business run. HR knows the people and policies, and there's always a secondary benefit here where we get recruiting as a side benefit once we activate the network of all the people. So HR is super critical to get them on board and to get that to understand, and then compliance or legal knows the boundaries and the rules. So this is just an idea of maybe some of the people, and again, if you have questions about this or want to understand it, just simply ask us. Ah, training. What do we train on? Well, we want to review the policy. We're going to ground ourselves to the policy and the best practices around that. We also want to uh, institute the boundaries, like what you can and cannot do. So this is just really giving fair warning and also knowledge about what happens when you do hit those boundaries and examples of ways to really be um, uh, in that realm of just being uh, safe and compliant uh, and then also keeping things moving. Uh, what if we uh, trained people, everybody, on the business objectives, the business goals? Uh, so rather than, than start with social media, why don't we start with really teaching them the goals of the institution? And what's interesting, and we just don't have the opportunity many times to share those internally to, between departments. So we always want to encourage that social teaming, working together online. That means that we're working together, right? As a team, we identified the first team, which was the management team. So we're all in this together and we can have input and feedback, although you want to choose your, you know, most 
uh, critical folks at the top. Um, as we look at uh, as we look at building influence, we want to train people like what's in it for them. So they're going to have a real incredible career. We're going to have a real. Um, uh, they're going to actually wind up uh, being more successful. Uh, many of them will get advancements in their career because um, they're building influence or being seen as a thought leader. They're building a network. So really taking it to that next level. Then we talk about our brand champions, the advocates of the brand. So this is where, um, you know, how can you be a brand champion? What are the rewards of being the brand champion? And you know how I feel about rewards, but sometimes there's personal rewards out of that as well. Functional social media and digital basics. How do we click on things? What are the settings? How do we protect ourselves? And in many cases with our uh, training that we do, we help people protect not just the bank or the institution, but their families. So we teach them how to overall be good, what we call digital citizens. It's always interesting, but uh, it's funny how many people don't know some of the simple practices of just being safe online. Uh, social selling, which is where you get the sales team or biz dev team uh, in the mix here, and sometimes account execs and customer service working together. Um, that would be social selling and then measuring the success. So you always want to say if you're going to put the objectives in front of people, how do we measure to make sure we're being successful? Now, the next piece is we get into is the influencer team. They represent thought leadership. They're already a fan of the brand. You don't have to convince them. You don't have to talk them into anything. Um, do your research. Is this person representing themselves well as well as you? Easiest thing is Google. We have a best practice. We look at the, the first three to five pages. We actually go into all the accounts that are displayed on the first page. And we really look to make sure that it's in alignment with somebody that we truly want to have on our team because we're going to put them out there as thought leaders and influencers within the bank. Now, it's interesting how many people we go to a lot of conferences and how many people we see that are sent to the conferences to speak on behalf of the brand. And then when we do a little bit of due diligence on who they are and their digital presence, we don't find the consistent thought leader that we see on stage. So please make sure that you're looking out for your people and your team that you send out there. Those are your influencers. Ensure that they're always polite, articulate. Um, they, they write re well-researched posts and, and really they're trained well in that area. And then don't base decisions solely on followers or willingness. We want to make sure they're really good uh, thought leaders and champions first. And then we'll get to the followers and, and things like that. So just because somebody raises their hand doesn't mean they're the best person for us. Um, the next one is the employee team. So as we think of the employee team, we think of uh, the people that are going to we're going to we're going to groom and bring up through the ranks. So the list is a little bit shorter, um, but there's still going to be uh, people that uh, uh, we vet out. We make sure that they're good. Uh, we make sure that they're trained and we make sure that uh, we're just not looking at somebody with a lot of followers. And please do your due diligence. We had somebody that was a specialist in a specific industry, and uh, the institution, the lending institution hired them for that. And then when we came to find out and we started looking, we found a MySpace account and an Instagram account that didn't have favorable, uh, let's just call it favorable content up there. And even that person didn't realize that it was still out there. So as we started to uh, sort of bring this to the surface, we then wanted to make sure the uh, individual was aware, uh, got that all cleaned up, uh, got it buttoned up, and now that individual is just uh, really successful today because every time somebody Googles them, they don't find that inappropriate content. All right, and then marketing. So I see a lot of my marketing folks on with us today. Uh, from the marketing perspective, we have content and then distribution. So this is where some of the control and partnership come in from the other teams and marketing. So we look at content and who's going to be authoring content and the blogs, who's going to be in press releases, 
uh, who's going to be quoted, you know, that's usually our influencer or management team. Um, and then are we going to do any sense of customer or client involvement where we have them participate in some of this and then get into possibly live stream down the road. We're now having some of our institutions uh, that have regular programs or interviewing people and producing live streaming content. Pretty cool. Now, we also have then the distribution. So this is where you can pick social media channels and we have a whole element where we go through and determine what are the best, safest, uh, easiest to control social media channels, what are public, what are private. We have the website and the blog. We also have newsletters, uh, email communications. Some of you run tombstones on your deals that uh, you have deals that have been put to bed and you want to talk about those and those could be in different formats. But how are you gonna get the word out there? And in that communication, uh, what are you allowing your people to do? So if I get an email from the institution, uh, am I allowed to forward that email? And so there has to be guidelines and boundaries around that. And then of course, uh, advertising. And we like uh, advertising around thought leadership. That always seems to bode the best, if you will. Now, uh, measurement is, uh, these are just a few, but again, we don't wanna over measure and then not move. So sometimes you wanna pick the path of least resistance, but of the highest efficiency rate. You know, how are we gonna grow? So let's talk about this. Um, audience relevancy, so is the audience relevant? Because that could affect all of your engagement, your ER rate. Um, impressions, are we getting impressions? And I'm okay with that, but you know, social reach and impressions aren't as impressive to me as telling me are people going, are people viewing us? How many people are looking at us? Because impressions uh, can sort of be a fuzzy math project with a lot of the platforms, especially the ones that are heavy into advertising like Facebook and Google and whatnot. So uh, I like views and engagement, right? How many people are engaging or talking with us? Um, what's our click through rate? So how do we click through? How does that work, you know? And are people clicking through to the right place? And that might increase in uh, followers or signups. And so that could look like leads. And then we break leads out and sales out into usually two big chunks, which are commercial uh, or business and consumer. So, um, or personal. So if you think about those two big chunks and then depending on how you sort of slice and dice your numbers and you measure things, you might have things that bust up between uh, deposits and loans and things like that and then other products within the institution. Um, employee satisfaction is a big one. If you're soliciting and getting reviews, that's great. If you're not soliciting and getting reviews and some of those are negative, that's not good. So we wanna make sure that you know that's a measurement as well. And then we love the recruiting benefit. Okay, let's go through a quick case study. And again, we're just sort of giving you a high level overview of walking you through this, but we wanna make sure we uh, uh, at least got this content out to you. So all good stuff. Um, so now as we look at the case study, um, we had a, a traditional marketing client that wanted to you know, create what we call as the, uh, the good old loyalty loop. That means you know, where people are finding out about us, they're considering us, um, there's typical conversion activity, then we get into building loyalty and then advocacy. And this is on the outside on the consumer or customer journey. And this is a lot of you have seen this out there and this is one of those typical models that you want to get people to not just consider but to also keep them engaged at, you know at that point of purchase and create loyalty and have them bring their network. So we had this amazing client that came to us uh, about a year or so ago and they uh, they were uh, uh, it was a new bank they were taking it over so they didn't have uh, quite anything set up and they said we need a digital presence we need to get online just like the mortgage group that I was talking to this morning and so they it is what it is they started where they're at and so in doing this um, you know they came to us and they had a couple of people that were rock stars Jim and Tom on the left there were rock stars and uh, I had dealt with them prior uh, in previous uh, areas that they worked at 
and um, so uh, so we were able to make sure they were good. Now Jim, I hadn't worked with before, but he's the leader at the top, the president, and interestingly enough, um, he literally was uh, a rock star out of the gate. He was the champion, and then Tom was also a champion then. We had other folks in the bank, and they had like their ne networks were fragmented a little bit, and uh, they just uh, needed um, some some really some sprucing up, if you will, and really putting their brand uh, on the right track. So in doing so, well, we went through a few things. Now, we looked at uh, some influencer marketing from the fact that we wanted to spotlight the team, and and we started from the inside out. So before we made any noise in the community. We actually went through and, and actually helped the employees and executives create thought leadership and a digital presence. And this, they, they specialized in commercial or business banking. And so the employee spotlight came after the fact, in fact, months and months after the fact, after we had highlighted uh, really the employee side of things. And that really, what the goal there was to really humanize the brand and, and create this effect. And then featured business clients uh, who were loyal clients, um, new client welcomes, a startup spotlight. We did tombstones that really uh, highlighted that as well, and um, really started to uh, started to feel good, like the humans were coming to the surface and people were appreciating that. So, um, and and at that point, we hadn't done really any advertising. So then spotlighting local business. In fact, they said they didn't have a budget for advertising out of the gate. So we started here and so we actually started generating immediate results once we, what we call activate that network. Now, uh, we did some spotlighting in the community. Remember our community marketing, uh, put, it, put that hat on for a minute. And we did um, new businesses, featured businesses, veteran owned businesses, um, recognition of businesses that are achieving things in the community um, and then business events and those can look like online events or in person and so um, you know a lot of you do those events and uh, they're effective but how often do you talk about them or how often do you put them on social media so there's some tremendous partnership opportunities that you can do out there and um, you know we can give you additional ideas on that again this is just a, a quick overview um, featured charities, um, do you have charities that you're responsible for that you maybe own? Uh, this was probably one of the earliest uh, successes of Facebook groups is a lot of institutions jumped early on and created Facebook groups, not necessarily about their brand, but about the charities that they support and then uh, other local efforts. Now we also did a little bit of noise that every time we had a client that we celebrated or there was a deal that closed, uh, we actually uh, attacked, um, uh, also attacked uh, the um, uh, internet from a way of content. And so we do a lot of uh, what we call SEO, search engine optimization press releases, which is part of our search engine marketing, SEM uh, sort of realm, if you will. And what we're doing here is we're taking keywords of how they want to get found and their region, you know, their ge geography or CRA, depending on how you operate. Um, and we wanted to get them found. So I talked about in, uh, when I talked about my book, I talked about getting found and being known um, in your industry. And so in doing this, uh, it was highly effective uh, for us to be able to, um, to actually add this to the content. And then uh, we put it on the website, we put it on LinkedIn profiles, and then it also went out to news media. And on average, we got picked up uh, just for hundreds of dollars, not thousands, um, in about uh, 300 to 400 news agencies. So super cool stuff. So there's the steps that are taken, right? So we started with policy and actually we didn't start there. We actually started with the management team. We did some training and we went back to policy. So I wanna emphasize here that you do not have to do all of this in order. Uh, you can pick this off in different steps depending on where you're at, where you're at and what you can achieve. So don't think that you have to start with an influencer team or start with a policy. When we come in the door, we do an evaluation and we help coach you and take you through the steps that are the ones that are most important based on your business objectives 
and your boundaries, your compliance. And so that's how you can be compliant and competitive. And so in doing this, when we got through the training, one of the things that we learned was that personal branding for the employees became important to them, for them to be known, their thought leadership. They loved career advancement. They loved to be recognized. They built powerful networks and this helped out. And a lot of people will say, well, yeah, but they get recruited away. Well, look at across the uh, border here. When you look at the right side of the institution, we have recruiting engine that was actually built based on um, the fact that we connected everybody together. So if people are connected and they're public about being brand advocates, they're gonna think twice about walking out the door. And honestly, if they're walking out the door, they were probably walking out the door anyway. Um, they increase their skills and in most cases generate more income depending on the institution. And on the right side, we have humanized brand, thought leadership, social team culture, uh, the recruiting engine um, that we spoke about, and then really building up those leaders on the inside and increasing that market share. And for our particular case study uh, for SunTrust uh, Bank, their commercial business increased, uh, deposits increased, other areas of business uh, became uh, activated. Uh, they have an active online social media community. Uh, their numbers continue to go up, and it's not by having the most followers, but their engagement is off the charts. And we couldn't do it without them. I want you to hear that. So we facilitated it. We help them. We coach them. We train them. Yes, we do help them with content and distribution, but really without their help and their involvement, uh, they wouldn't be near this successful. So you do need to have that team activated and motivated on the inside, uh, which again, we can talk to you about. And then we have um, an expanded digital search footprint, which was important to them. Their email uh, list uh, grew six to, uh, four times the size in six months, less than six months. Uh, and their recruiting is solely from their influencers networks. So the senior executives, we use their LinkedIn networks and they rock and roll. And the employees are having fun doing it and they go, oh my gosh, this is so much easier than cold calling. And especially when they come from somewhere else where they're dialing for dollars, they just love it. Um, and now we move on to nurturing ads, not necessarily hard pressed transactional ads, but really celebrating with ads in the community. And we love that it's more of community advertising or what we call nurturing ads. So cool stuff, right? All right, well, we'll take a few questions while we have them, but in summary, uh, think about uh, the seven steps. We actually have eight in here, don't we? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, I guess it's seven, but we added an extra one called celebrate the results in there, so uh, why not? Build the policy, enroll the management team, right? And again, you don't have to do these in order. Structure training enroll influencer team, enroll the employee team, confirm marketing support, commit to measure, right? So commit to measure your success, celebrate the results. So every week we have them insert these results into regular meetings. So it becomes a cultural component and really helps uh, people take off. So let's take some questions here and uh, I'll put the questions button up here, but I'll also take some questions. Okay, so Sandy asks, um, so how do we get started, <laughs> right? So that's always the big question. Well, a lot of times we'll come in and we'll do an assessment. So we have like a two-day assessment that we do. We interview management, we interview employees, uh, we do an intake on all the components that exist or don't exist uh, within the institution. And then we help uh, with you, along with you really support um, uh, putting together a game plan or a pathway that makes sense. And like we, what we are on uh, with a group today that was literally just starting out and they go, we need to really walk or crawl before anything is thought about running. And I said, we're used to that. So we just need to understand the dynamics and the metrics. And some people come in and go, we need to be to, at this many leads by this date. And, you know, and so they'll come in and they have a whole different agenda. So it really depends on you know, the mindset of your institution and where you're at. Um, and then um, let's see another question here from Ken is, uh, yes, so he's, he was just saying, if we already have a policy, will we help review that policy? Yes, we will. 
And, um, and uh, another question here, if uh, the training uh, is, uh, yes, if the training is, um, if we already have training, can we incorporate your training into our training? Yes, that's a common request that we get all the time. Um, what if we don't have senior management and accounting? Can you help guide us in that area? Yes, we have um, outsourced CMO services where what we'll do is we'll come in, we'll help oversee things, and then we'll help utilize the team members that you do have. And we will coach and train your team or your team to be on our system as well. So we're not afraid to, to basically show the the recipe or the secret of success here. Um, and remember, it continuously involves, so training should not be a single event, it should be an ongoing support system of training, which is uh, one thing a lot of people forget about. Okay, any other questions? Um, yes, yeah, we can definitely uh, talk after this. A uh, bunch of people are asking to talk after this. So um, with that being said, uh, just think about what makes the most sense in what area. You know, some of it uh, is content management uh, that starts there so that you can have a content machine going. Some of it is employee advocacy, so you can have people that are champions of uh, the program, right? So you want to make sure you have that. Sometimes it's uh, just about developing some policy and having some training to get a small pilot group uh, off the ground. So that's the good news is to really help take it, you know, based on steps that fit for your organization. Okay, any other questions? Nothing, huh? So for those of you that want to check us out, you can go to our parent company at Forward Progress, and that's forwardprogress.net, and you can check out our social media channels. Uh, social Jack, which is uh, the training and coaching platform, you can check that out, or you're welcome to connect to me, Dean, at forwardprogress.net via email, or connect to me on LinkedIn. So um, so with that being said, I think we're, uh, questions are good. I promise I'd keep this under 40 minutes. I'm at 41 minutes, so not too bad. And uh, for those of you that have questions, please send them in. And some of you have asked to have us contact you, and we'll do that as soon as we're done here. You'll hear from either uh, Nancy Reed or myself or Morgan, and we'll get a hold of you. And uh, we'll uh, definitely help answer questions. We know this is a process and uh, hopefully you found this useful. And thank you for all the comments in here. We truly appreciate that. So with that being said, we will see you uh, increasing your business influence and thought leadership for your institution online and uh, hopefully uh, talk to you and see you soon. Take care, everybody.